attorney's union that certain attorneys from the district attorney's office made representations perhaps to individual board members or said things to the community that got back to the board members that caused great concern that somehow we were overstaffed and that if you only would give them a raise then they wouldn't need to have so many people well the, the first response to that is obviously that did not come from the district attorney those statements if they were made because I've never been able to nail this down and believe me I've tried I've tried talking to individuals nobody when you go to talk to them will say yes I told you know supervisor pinches that we didn't need these attorneys then if you give us the money nobody has done that and no supervisor has come to me and expressed attorney X said this to me but whatever the genesis of this belief that has been put out, I would suggest that that was a union seeking to get raises, a union that chose to go on strike, seeking to gain money, and probably would certainly want to exaggerate or say things that would lead to the pay increases that they were seeking from the county. So that didn't come from me. I obviously, from the beginning of uh, my term, looked very closely at this and monitored the attorneys and their caseload very closely, I came to the conclusion that absolutely we needed every attorney we had. In fact, we need more attorneys. And as far as this, I mean, and I agree, because I'm going through this right now with um, negotiations on the MCM settlement which I was not in the room, but my name is on the pleadings and on the settlement, and I will be the signing party to that. The attorneys involved were Ventura District Attorney, Attorney General's Office, and what is called CDAA, for those that don't know that, California District Attorneys um, Association. They have a special prosecutor unit. The attorney from that unit worked under Norm Roman's name first, now works under my name. And when they divided this up, they, they decided a, a division that I'm not happy with and I'm working on. But my obvious questions, just what you ask. So, Mr. Special Prosecutor, how many hours did you work on this case? We're talking about a $6 million settlement. He hadn't kept any hours. I said, is it fair? Did these different agencies put in as much work as you did? He assures me, yes. Can I get time studies from the AG's office to show that they really put that much work in or if they're trying to balance their budget on our backs? How about the Ventura attorney? Nobody. At this point, I am having him do a matrix because I have to answer to the people of Mendocino County. So I do understand your position. They have something they call a matrix. If we were to do time studies, I think our office would come to a halt. Time studies in the sense of what civil attorneys do. And I've been a civil attorney and I bought this special program that you plug in what client it is and every time I worked on a case, I made sure to put in just how much time and what I did. Because if I didn't, I wouldn't be paid. I had to provide good bills to my clients. That is not what happens in the public attorney's arena. And I am unaware of a single office of the public defender or the district attorney that can, does or is able to be in a position to do that. Last year, in order to meet budget with the requirements put on me, I started out as a new DA with being two DA short. And by the end, I was three DA short. And as many of you remember, I did not have a department analyst, basically, for a good part of the year. So that office has had everybody scrambling to cover cases everybody doing their best and what that does is it creates more sick leave more problems it means case preparation suffers which means we i don't feel that we provide the service we should unless the attorneys are there interviewing the witnesses interviewing the victims following up on all the different pieces um, of what they're doing but to make a very simple analysis for you I have explained and I put it in my um, budget narrative and in information that I have tried to put out. Um, you look at our office and if we look at this chart, which I couldn't really see when I was sitting down, 
I believe we're at 16 attorneys. We're finally staffed. We're finally getting organized. We're working with the courts on, on the courtroom, making sure to have all the attorneys in the right courtroom. If you look at this, just between the alternate public defender's office and the public defender's office, aren't they at about 16 attorneys as well between those two offices, Jennifer? Yes. Okay, so you're pitting my office against 16 public defenders. Guess what? Jill Ravitch, my new chief, she's in a murder trial right now. Is it a public defender case? Oh, no. Keith Folder, a private attorney, is handling it. You look at the big marijuana cases that are just a time sucker that takes two to three years to ever get to trial or to settlement. Those are basically, bar none, very high-powered, very well-paid private attorneys. So we are man or woman to man or woman. You're already putting us below where this office needs to be to provide the service that we want to provide as professional, dedicated attorneys to the county. Because at any given time, when the trials are going out, the big trials that take a long time, those are private attorneys. You talk about the big sex cases and the rape cases. Many of those are handled by private attorneys. So some of the most difficult, some of the cases that are most important to the people of our county are not handled by the public defenders or alternate defenders or an appointed conflict attorney. So just think about that. We're not, you know, if this was a military action, wouldn't you want to have the right amount of bodies to win the war? We don't have the right amount of bodies here. And I think, I understand why you want this, but look at it in the context of the fact you were looking at attorneys who were woefully unpaid. We were bleeding attorneys to, to Sonoma County, to everywhere else. So I'd really like you to think about it because quite frankly, I need to be coming to you asking for more attorneys. I need another legal secretary desperately. I have no secretary, I'm the DA. I've never worked when I was in private practice without a top-notch legal secretary at my hand. I type my own things, I fax my own things, I answer all my own phone calls and make all my own appointments. So that is how our office works, and they are dedicated. I, sir, I absolutely respect your job in making sure that the, the county's getting what it should. But um, I guess those are some of my main points. Um, you know, we, we don't even have a system for them to keep track of it. And in private firms, the office manager runs around every attorney on Fridays beating them over the head to try to get them. And that's when you're not going to, you literally won't be paid. So I, I just ask that you take that into consideration and take into the consideration the true sacrifice that the district attorney's office has made this entire last year because it's not a small thing when you're a small office and you have to cover for two or three people missing. You have one person sick and one person at a seminar. It's, I, I personally have gone to Point Arena to do calendar. The district attorney of the county should not be going to Point Arena and Fort Bragg